What's up everyone, it's Dakota, and welcome back to another video. Uh, I guess it's not Modern or Pioneer, it's kind of a mix of both. So, we just got an announcement yesterday of the pending announcement that is coming December 4th, a Monday, for a ban restricted announcement. And it sounds like they're going to go Scorched Earth on multiple formats. And of course, we're going to cover the two most popular slash only ones that I really cover on my channel uh, in Pioneer and Modern. And cards that I'm going to uh, suspect are going to get banned, or at least the ones that are being talked about. And really why I like or really even dislike what's going on so before we get into that of course if you are not subscribed to the channel and you want to see more videos like this you want to see modern and pioneer content be sure to subscribe to the channel ring the notification bell so you know when those videos get posted and there's a link in the description down below to my discord server as well if you if that is something that interests you go over there uh follow the link join all that fun stuff super easy free ways to support my content i really appreciate it now let's get into the video so modern if you've watched my channel, if you've been a, uh, a peruser of the channel, if you will, you know that Modern is, like, by far my favorite format. It's the format that got me into playing competitive Magic and, like, really getting deep into it. You know, like, I played a lot of Standard, but, like, Modern is just a thing that has encapsulated me in, like, my interest of playing Magic the most. And uh, it's kind of miserable right now. Like, Scam, you know... Uh, People are running the numbers and stuff, saying that like scam isn't that great. It's actually actively bad right now. But when you have an almost 21% uh, metagame hold, and, you know, like since the Pro Tour like has dominated and has just seen more and more play. And of course, we've seen you know the, the rise of, like the Beanstalk deck come around and kind of help you know take some of the share I guess away from you know Rakdos but it's also kind of doing it to the other decks in the format as well which I think it was really hurting Modern's diversity and really what made Modern great honestly like even when Scam was like in the format and I think really before people even like played it as much as they did top decks in the format were like eight to nine percent and you weren't even necessarily guaranteed to like play against them and it's not like they were uh super powerful in the way that like scam is where you could just win a game without your opponent taking a game action you know we saw murktide just being a very good deck because it was very tempo oriented and if they kind of got to like sink their claws into the game they got an early threat down whatever you know it basically like whatever threats they were playing with like the rest of the format was playing with where this deck in particular is kind of abusing you know a, a cool mechanic and i think a cool design for a card to then just essentially make the game absolutely miserable for everybody else so uh with that like ep uh, prologue i guess to that you know i picked out three cards that uh, could see a potential banning in the format of course, the number one being Fury. I honestly think that Grief should also either also get banned with it or should be the one that goes. Um, but I am a little bit more in favor of Fury. You know, uh, Even though I am a Yawgmoth player, I love my little creatures and everything. And Fury is literally probably the bane of my existence. You know, So I would love to see uh, Grief go along with Fury. So Grief is kind of just like a... Uh, uh, an anecdote into into fury while i think grief overall is like the biggest problem right like the fact that we have a card and a strategy that can essentially nullify whatever you're doing or you know you have to two for one yourself on top of already losing then your best card to feasibly play a game of magic but then the that same deck also gets to play probably one of the best one drops like ever printed in the format followed up by a two drop that has a lot of relevant text against the majority of the format is something that's really hard to overcome and i think fury and grief need to go solely for the fact that i think people need to be able to play aggressive creature decks you know either creature combo or creature decks period you know to be able to kind of race against like the mid-range decks when they just have like kind of their control type draws and everything and then, like, Grief as well, just to try to stop as many non-games as possible. You know, uh, I don't think Scam, at least nowadays, is the sole, like, the sole purpose of, like, Modern not necessarily being fun. But, you know, it's definitely, like, at least to me, 80-90% of the reason. If you watch streams and stuff, like, we play against Scam, playing like Yawgmoth, and we managed to beat it pretty consistently. Honestly, like, I can't even remember the last time, at least on Moto, that I, like, lost to a uh, Rakdos Fury or a Rakdos Evoke deck and just 
you know, either, I mean, felt miserable playing it, but really, like, miserable and losing the game and stuff. So it's just something that probably shouldn't exist in in modern. And, of course, like, it's a very competitive strategy. Players have latched onto it. I mean, it's... No, it's it's the best deck for a reason, and by you know tons tons of strides, like you know it's it's the best deck in the format, and I think it's lived long enough. I think Fury or Grief should go, uh, and probably both. Honestly, like let's just kind of get them out of here. So uh, that's Fury. That's the number one card. I think uh, has the most likely chance of probably getting banned in Modern, along with like Grief also kind of being on that list as well. So the next one, a card that we is uh, i guess we didn't allude to this one's the next one i messed up the order <laughs> oh well so bowmaster is a very powerful card and for those of you that don't think it's a very powerful card uh just know that you've probably never played against it or you know like you saw it like one time and it immediately died and you're like well dies to removal it's bad so orcish bowmaster being a flash threat being a threat to one toughness creatures Obviously, you know, we see uh, Delighted Halfling seeing a lot of play, and the fact that I think if it was like a one mana one one that had its abilities, I don't know. People would people would still play it, uh, because I think it is kind of good enough to where you can kind of dodge a Bowmaster slash a Ren and Six uh, activation and whatnot. Um, the fact that it has two toughness instead of one makes it, you know, just an auto like slam dunk. Like you're not, it's a card that you include and you're not worried about it. We've seen decks that went from playing like Ignoble Hierarchs, Birds of Paradise, Noble Hierarchs, whatever, into playing Delighted Halfling because of it has an extra toughness, an extra point of toughness. And Bowmaster has the additional upside versus like Red and Six to where, you know, there is some spots where like you can just Bowmaster and ping something and then your opponent ends up like drawing an extra card and you're able to take down two and even three toughness creatures uh the amount of games that i've played where i've just played a bowmaster and my opponent's like activated the second chapter of fable the mirror breaker or they've cast like preordains and things like that uh, other just draw spells into an orcish bowmaster a, a fully known bowmaster and it just like slowly accrues more value and stuff and of course some of the other decks i mean like yawgmoth in particular i mean that's the deck that i have the most experience playing with in the format you know can use this and just create two bodies off of it that was paid for like quarter calling is a two mana so you could even eldritch evolution it away to go into some bigger plays and just overall is an annoying card. Of course, we know that the One Ring also exists in the format. But honestly, the fact that I think it's seen significantly less play than, I mean, what we've seen. And the fact that instead of it being kind of the thing that players build around, I think it's just included in some of the other things going on. And while I think the One Ring can be pretty miserable to play against if you're a player that you know, is playing these, you know, super aggressive strategies and your opponent's just able to, like, draw one card, draw two cards, draw three cards, you know, and all of a sudden they're up, you know, six, ten cards on you and haven't really lost any life and have found ways to, like, mitigate the life loss and stuff from that, you know, it, it does get pretty rough. But I think Orcish Bowmaster in particular is even rougher to play with, and I think... At least the hope is for me, if Bowmasters goes, that the One Ring will either follow with it or be shortly behind it. Because then I could definitely see a world where people are just jamming like Omnath on the One Ring again and we're just like trying to gain as much life as possible, draw as many cards as possible, and find ways to win the game from there just by absolutely just grinding your opponent into pace. So uh, Bowmaster... While a card I'm not particularly excited to see go if it does go away, if we're going Scorched Earth like I think we are, uh, we're probably hitting some of the most played cards and some of the top played cards in the most popular strategies, Orcish Bowmaster, seeing play in Rakdos midrange, seeing play in just about any deck that is playing black mana that is not trying to like Cascade or anything like that. So, you know, Bowmaster probably going to get the axe. Uh, may, if not this banning, maybe the next one, especially if the ring decides to go away as well. Finally, the last card that I have for Modern that I pointed out, uh, as you could probably figure out by the fact that I did screw up the order a little bit, is up the Beanstalk. So there are obviously the pitch elementals, there's Fury and there's Solitude that trigger up the Beanstalk. You know, we played a deck on the channel that literally was just like a combo deck that was going to cascade into up the beanstalk and then it was going to 
then cast its free elementals to draw three, four cards each time you play a Jace, and then you end up decking yourself and winning the game. That's kind of what these Up the Beanstalk decks have come to. Of course, we have Leyline Binding as well, being uh, a six-mana enchantment that has Flash, but really in like these Up the Beanstalk decks, you are able to get Domains, so you're able to get that cost down to one, but it still costs six in your deck, so you're never going to Cascade into it meaning that it has essentially one mana catch-all removal for your opponent's permanence, which, I mean, a lot of the time, even in these decks in particular, you know, there's not something of yours that you want to get rid of anyway. So, like, the drawback of sorts where you can only target your opponent's things really doesn't matter, or at least doesn't come up in a lot of situations. Uh, this just absolutely grinds people into pace. Of course, you know, we have Bowmaster, but I think if Bowmaster goes up, the Beanstalk has to go as well. You know, uh, maybe it's getting rid of, like, too many things like draw cards, but we've noticed in modern magic nowadays, and uh, this is just, like, outside the modern format too you know pioneer and beyond where we see cards that just you play them you end up drawing a card and then they have like a ton of abilities we see it on omnath four mana four four draws a card when it enters and then you get a bunch of other bonuses by playing extra lands up the beanstalk you draw a card when you play this thing and then even if it just sits on the battlefield if you use it in a fair way and it just sits on the battlefield you know the fact that your big five six seven mana spells that you know you could potentially uh, cash for cheaper either because they have their own self like cost reduction uh, abilities or you know you're able to just like ramp and you have like 10 12 mana in play and you're able to play multiples i mean this card is great in multiples it's good by itself and of course you know when you're playing cards that you can cast for free that have a high mana cost or paying one mana that have a high mana cost and you're able to you know get rid of your opponent's best threat and draw two cards Pretty amazing, you know. So up the mean stock here, kind of enabling um, more degenerate things to happen in modern. Of course, not as bad as the Rakdos scam deck, but you know when where one side is absolutely just decimating your hand and trying to mind twist you, the other one is just casting ancestrals, you know, for zero mana the whole game, and also like being able to interact with your board as well. I mean, like imagine like your opponent just getting to exile your best threat or kill your whole board and then getting to draw two, three, four cards off of it. You know, like usually in like those ways and what those kind of elementals and stuff are for is essentially like you get an effect that is going to help you kind of keep the game even or maybe even get ahead a little bit right in the moment or kind of slow your opponent down but they're being used as combo pieces to then you know further an advantage where maybe you're even to where like the effect is going to get you ahead and then drawing you know the cards that you essentially spent to play that spell are just going to further like bury your opponent. It's kind of like the inverse, I think, of scam, you know, and I think that's where the modern format is kind of headed to, where we're just going to see more and more busted things and essentially kind of rolling the dice and hoping that, you know, things kind of play and work out the way that you want them to, you know, by either drawing a ton of cards or just praying that your opponent cannot draw a ton of cards by ripping out all their good cards away. So that's my thoughts on modern. Uh, there is three cards I showcase, but there's probably about five or six that uh, if they absolutely just wanted to like do a hard reset on the format, you know, we, we kind of know some of the cards that could go. But now we're going to shift our focus to Pioneer and some of the other cards in the format, you know, that have recently gotten a lot of attention and some other cards that probably have kind of overstayed their welcome to this point so next we have geological appraiser this is the new card from the lost caverns of ixalan set a part of essentially one of like two or three different discover decks so uh for those that have like played modern and aren't really into pioneer or kind of put it in terms for like the pioneer players to kind of understand where kind of this comes from so uh discover is essentially like cascade and Cascade said that like if you cast a spell, you got to flip through your deck until you found a spell that cost less than the spell that you cast. So Geological Appraiser, 4 mana, 3-2. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, discover 3. That's the important thing. Most cards like this have a you know caveat where if it's cast from your hand, you get to do the thing. And I think there's like a few like there's a few creatures and creatures that they have printed where it said, hey, if you cast this card from your hand, you get to do an effect. Where Geological Praiser says you just have to cast it. Well, for those not in the know, Discover 
means that you cast the spell without paying its mana cost. So in the combo decks that we're seeing here, you cast Appraiser, you end up getting a clone, or an Eldritch Evolution, whatever. But in this case, you get a clone that costs 3 mana. You end up casting it. It enters the battlefield as a copy of Geological Appraiser. Guess what? You cast the clone, you get to discover again. And you get to keep going until you hit Eldritch Evolution. You sack one of these things, you get a 6 cost card, and you know continue to kind of fill out your board until you find a uh, troll to give your entire team haste and plus one plus oh and smash your opponent's face and win the game uh there's other versions of the discover deck but this one at least to me probably seems like it's the most consistent it gets to play a decent amount of interaction and things like that and quite honestly this needs to go uh, i think having something with discover three we've we've noticed that having cards that have a low cmc that end up allowing you to cast things for free ends up being really tough and i think in pioneer in particular if you had something that was like discover i mean in modern it would probably be busted but if you had like discover two or discover one in pioneer it really wouldn't be that bad because there isn't any like suspend cards or whatever or even like really small mana cost cards that do unbelievably broken things like we do in modern so I think that maybe if you lowered the Discover on this, it probably would have been fine. But as it stands right now, the fact that this is like a one-card combo that is just going to go through your entire deck and put a billion power into play on like turn three, given some of the help that I can get, this card's just got to go. Uh, you could probably make an argument for Contorius Cond as well, because uh, he discovers four and you know, can essentially do the same thing. The, the restriction is built around in the same way. Um... But in reality, like, at least this one has to go. Like, I don't think a Discover as a archetype, you know, Planeswalker or, you know, uh, the Eldritch Evolution version and whatnot probably just shouldn't exist in the format. So that's kind of my take on just that new deck in particular. It is a lot of fun to play, and it is very good. Uh, and I think it just might be too good, especially this early on in the format as well. And I know there's like the Amelia combo deck, but after like playing it and actually getting some serious reps in with it, it just like, yeah, I mean, it's it's got some draws where if you set up like this three, four card combo, you can just win the game on the spot. And there's just a tad bit of redundancy, but like this deck is just has like a, a way more like, to, at least to me, a lot more redundancy and stuff like that. And a lot of other cards that are more, you know, of of matter of fact rather than you know like theoretically you know i could you know playing like a numbers game and stuff so uh yeah geological appraiser if it got the band hammer i definitely would not be surprised it probably needs to go or at least some things from this discovered deck need to go next we have fable of the mirror breaker which is going to kind of coincide, and it, this is probably the least, I mean, maybe not. I think uh, Up the Beanstalk is probably the least exciting uh, in just terms of raw cards for, you know, both formats. But, you know, we have Fable the Mirror Breaker. This has been a saga that has existed in Modern and has seen less play over time, and you know, outside of the, like, Rakdos scam decks. Uh, and Fable really shows up in the Rakdos decks in Pioneer and a lot of the other red decks as well, you know, minus, like, Phoenix. Uh, but, you know, making a 2-2 attacks, make a treasure token, discard two cards. If you do, draw that many cards. And then you exile it, transform, and essentially you have a creature that you can pay one mana and tap it to create a copy of a non-legendary creature, gains haste, exile it at the end of your turn. Or at the end of the next end step. So, uh, with two fables in play, you know, we can just make a board full of 2-2s and then, you know, uh, kind of essentially do the same thing. And then attack for a bunch of damage. And uh, you can leave up mana, you're able to interact, and if you don't have to meaningfully interact, you just make a ton of tokens, smash your opponent, uh, exile all of them, and say go. You know, it's um, it's a good card. Uh, Fable is a really good card, and has been a card that has been tossed around as potentially being banned in Pioneer, as well as Modern as well, uh, although not nearly to the degree as uh, a lot of the other cards that we talked about. Uh, Fable just gives you a lot of value for 3 mana. It's a very powerful card. Uh, it just enables a lot of the strategies, like in the mid-range decks, 
this is kind of the way that you can filter through some of your bad cards in a matchup to potentially draw towards getting good cards. I think the Rakdos midrange decks and Rakdos sacrifice decks in Pioneer are just so good at just playing like a, a dirty game where you just kind of like make things difficult for your opponent and you kind of like stave them off long enough to where like you can kind of set up your own board and then they really can't interact with yours and your board and all the actions you're taking are able to interact with your opponent ultimately just kind of like grinding them out and winning the game that's how mid-range decks do it it's not pretty but you know fable is definitely a uh, an important piece to that and i think given the other card that we're going to talk about and the kind of the implications of all these cards getting hit that fable is probably going to need to go or at least something is going to have to change for those decks finally we have the last card card the great creator I have talked about this card just needing to go away, take a long walk off a short bridge, whatever. Card the Great Creator is insane. The fact that in the Mono Green deck, in the Mono Green Devotion deck in specific, you are able to play a bunch of these combo pieces and silver bullets in your sideboard that are going to essentially help you to eventually get to an infinite combo. And, you know, in some cases, just making near infinite essentially infinite mana going through a ton of loops and things like that and then getting to loop the stone brain to exile your opponent's library entirely and then force them to draw a card uh getting to really just put like big giant threats that are going to pick off your opponent's board one by one while also like having a board full of four fours and five sixes and six sixes and so on uh the, the mono green deck is just hard to deal with because it feels like even when you interact with like their mana dorks and you end up getting rid of like some of their bigger creatures and stuff they just have these annoying pieces where like card in the great creator even when you don't have a ton of mana to make with nykthos still ends up getting cards that uh impact the board and are super effective in just getting you to the point where you can start making a ton of mana and you have you know you're slamming one big threat and then two big threats and then all of a sudden you, know, you storm the festival and you're just chaining nykthoses together you're creating a ton of mana and then Karn the great creator is just kind of like extending that to the point where you know you could go from a board that has like three four five devotion you know barely netting mana off of your nykthos to you know generating 15 20 mana and just w being able to win the game in a spot where it really probably shouldn't have been possible for you to win the game uh through normal means and stuff so uh in at the end of the day you know if mono green if nykthos is going to be a card that was just like yes th this would be a fine card for the format i think Karn the great creator has to go i think uh, even though mono green might be on like the downswing or whatever with some of the other combo decks and things like that i think that you still need to get rid of card the great creator i think you still need to limit that deck because if you just kind of get rid of all the combo decks you uh, kind of nerf some of the more aggressive decks you nerf like uh, red black mid range and whatnot then you just have uh, the green decks kind of come back to the top until you know you have another announcement and then that announcement you finally do the thing that you should have done and people are stuck playing a miserable format for a few months uh obviously short of like emergency bannings but i think uh with this announcement we're going to try and avoid having to do emergency bans after um but yeah that is like my thoughts and opinions cards that could be banned or un or cards that could be banned in modern and pioneer as well uh just uh, it, both formats are kind of a mess you know, uh, I'm long overdue for a big shakeup. I think the change that they made in Modern by unbanning Preordain was a good one, but I, I definitely don't think it was good enough to kind of shift the format in the direction where you wanted to. You want diverse formats. I think you want diverse formats where maybe like one deck is like considered miserable, but it's like really not that miserable. Where I think Modern and Pioneer right now just have a lot of decks that feel like they're just an absolute slog to play through. Uh, some of the games are fun, but like most of the time you just kind of feel like you're kind of hoping that you just don't lose out of nowhere. So, which isn't necessarily like a fun feeling, but 
you know, uh, I guess it is what it is. You know, I, I'm not the fun police. But uh, that's going to do for me in this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a comment down below or leave a like on the video and then comment down below uh, what cards you think could be banned in Pioneer or Modern or what cards you'd want to see banned. And, of course, if you haven't already, subscribed to the channel. Ring the notification bell so you know when other videos get posted. And go to the link in the description down below to join the Discord server. That's going to do for me. Hope you all enjoyed the video. And I'll see you all in the next one.